Good evening, everybody. How's everyone doing today on this awesome Sunday? I wasn't able to go to church again, and I'm really ticked about it. But I just got blessed with being able to hear one of the most godly men speak. Uh, I got to hear him uh, live stream um, online. Uh, his name is Greg Laurie, and he pastors Harvest Church out of California. And he, I get daily devotionals from him. And I just posted uh, today's on Facebook. I would really encourage you to get it. This man is very on point preaching God's word. And I just had the privilege of hearing him, uh, watching him online uh, preach on Joseph. Uh, it's entitled The Temptation of a World Changer. His, his whole sermon series is about world changers. I only listened to this sermon. I haven't listened to the others, but man, this got me. And, and I had to share it with you. I have the link here. Uh, please listen to it. But I, I had to share some things out of this with you that God really put on my heart. Those of you that know, to sum things up, Joseph was one of the 12 sons of Jacob who wound up through no fault of his own because of his brother's jealousy and because of the dysfunction that was in you know, Jacob's family. Uh, wound up in Egypt as a slave, but God was still working through the situation and God blessed Joseph to where he's been sold to this man named Potiphar, who, as Genesis says here, is the captain of the guard. Apparently he was a chief executioner, according to what Greg was stating, which I, I found very interesting. And it says how the Lord was with Joseph, everything that Joseph did for Potiphar. It prospered, beyond prospered. God blessed Potiphar, God blessed Joseph. So everything just, you know, was was boundless in blessings from God because of Joseph. And and it, this was God's doing. It's totally God's doing. And during this, he put Joseph in charge. Potiphar puts Joseph in charge of his entire household. And it says, basically, he made him an overseer. And everything he had, he put into Joseph's hands. Joseph's hands. The only thing he ever had to worry about was, what am I going to eat next? You know, that was about it. And the problem was, a little tempting thing sprung up as you read in this you see that joseph you know is you know very good looking he's very well favored the whole nine yards but there is what i would refer to as the world's first desperate housewife i have a, a vlog about that uh, if you uh put in a desperate housewife of egypt you'll see what i'm talking about it's very powerful and here, Potiphar's wife sees Joseph, and she is lusting after him. It says so in, in, in Scripture. And she's trying every way possible that she can to seduce Joseph. Uh, it was funny how... Um, how do I put this? Um... Uh, Pastor Greg was, was referring to this as, uh, he was comparing it to the movie Mrs. Robinson, or, or, or The Graduate, excuse me, with Dustin, Hoss, uh, Dustin Hoffman. And trust me, I've seen the movie, and it's interesting to say the least. Uh, I, I found it very, uh, and, and he also jokingly referred to her as the, the, uh, <laughs> the original cougar which I thought was hysterical. I really thought it was a, I thought it was absolutely hysterical. And I'm going to post the link to my original vlog. I'm going to post a link to it. I'm not and let it, so you can see, you know, more about it. And uh, I do have a few uh, you know, things things about this as well because I got this from uh, the Time Warp Wife devotional. And I want to share all of that with you. 
But basically, uh, with Pat, what Pastor Greg was talking about with this, it really spoke volumes. Because we face a lot of temptations, don't we? I mean, some serious temptations. And Joseph is faced with this temptation of Potiphar's wife. And she's, as I said, she's the good-looking older woman. And he's this young guy who naturally is, you know, good-looking guy, you know, has natural sexual desires. I mean, everybody else does. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. But here, she is just pursuing him to no end. And his response is this. Behold, my master wotteth not what is with me in the house, and he hath committed all that he hath it to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph is, is not just simply using logic. He's, he's using, you know, he's, he's basically stating, I'm not going to sin against God by, by being anywhere near you. And one of the things that uh, Pastor Greg commented on, as you see, is how Joseph was a model of how a Christian should function in the workplace. That he was an exemplary employee. Everything he did, he did it for the Lord because he knew it was ultimately going to answer to the Lord. But here's this temptation that comes along. And he points out how testing and temptation, it can produce good in the life of a believer, especially when they choose to submit their heart and life to Christ Jesus. And he pointed out to how temptation comes when we're the most vulnerable. And Joseph was. He's been in Egypt for more than likely 10 years at this point. Probably really misses his family. Is really hurting from what his own brothers did to him. And here he's got, you know, good looking Potiphar's wife here. And... When I did the, the study in the Time Warp Wife, that he, she stated something, and this is very true. You know, temptation comes when we're the most vulnerable, but also being virtuous can come at a very high cost for the person that's exercising it. But if your heart is submitted to the Lord and you allowed him to guide and direct your path, that cost will be far outweighed by the blessings that God gives back. And... When I read this, it really spoke to me, you know, when I was doing this study. But when Pastor Greg was talking about this, you know, I, I was somewhat being reminded, I was being reminded of a lot to this, uh, of a lot of this, pardon me. And despite all the good looks, her being so seductive, Joseph chose to resist. That was a difficult thing to do. He chose to do so by refusing to be e e even in the same room with her. Potiphar's wife was still pursuing him to the point of attempting to rape him. Uh, a commentary I read uh, stated in the context, uh, Asbury Bible Commentary, says in a context of seductive temptation, deceptive slander and injustice, Joseph emerges unscathed. His faith, prudence, and integrity remain intact. The dreams or blessings will not be placed in jeopardy because of a fling of passion. Purely pure and simple here because he chose to reject her advances especially he flees for his dignity because uh according to this it, it says in in this passage and I'll, I'll read it it says basically that he fled and got him out he uh, he left his garment behind he was wearing some type of a coat or something that's all he had behind and of course she lies and it's interesting, Pastor Greg says in this area, he believes that Potiphar knew his life was lying, but he went along with it. And maybe maybe it was because he was looking out for Joseph, who knows? But Joseph is again, you know, put in a very dr drastic situation. He's in, he's in prison for something he never did. But he chose to resist. 
And I got to thinking when I was not not just reading this chapter during the study, but also, you know, listening to Pastor Greg. And I got to thinking of how so hard it is to take a stand and not compromise, you know, not and and not give in to temptation, you know, and and you know, facing, choosing to resist, choosing to follow what James four verse seven says, which I posted on here, and. I really, I really, really, really felt so burdened about this because I've had moments where I screw up. I give in to a temptation. And it's not just simply a sexual sin. It could be giving in to anger or giving in to something that you know or doing something that you know on the job, in particular stealing, you name it. Anything that would dishonor God. And as I said, he chose to take a stand Joseph chose to, to, to not be in the same room with her, and it got to a point where she had him cornered and she was about to rape him. He ran. And because Joseph chose to resist, even though he was falsely accused, God still blessed, God was still protecting him. And one of the things that showed me was, you know, that if, as much as humanly possible, stay away from temptation. Because, you see, temptation starts with something really itty-bitty. But then it grows into something bigger. Have you ever noticed that? I compare it to a snowball. You start out small, and if it rolls down the hill, it just becomes this huge mass. But I think we need to choose to submit to God and refuse to give in to the devil. Basically what James 4 verse 7 states, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know, I'm reminded of an um, a, uh, something out of Star Trek The Next Generation me being a Trekkie sorry I'm putting in a Star Trek reference but there's a race of beings called the Borg and they're automatons they're single minded and their phrase they have a phrase resistance is futile and on our own resisting Satan is futile but with God we can resist when we submit our hearts to him and we need to choose to do that I'm wondering, guys, how many of you have given in to a temptation? How many of you have given in and done something that you really, really regret later on? You know, David did that. King David himself did that. Well, he, there's two things that associate with him. This was something Pastor Greg was stating. First, you know, Goliath, that triumph, and then Bathsheba. But you know what? God turned that situation and turned it into his glory when David confessed his sin God honored that confession and God forgave and through all that the the the, the messianic line was it was was produced and it's interesting how I was reading this how Potiphar's wife you know could have chosen to resist she could have taken no for an answer but she didn't and I also think, too, in this area, how many times are there marriages out there who fail because they don't keep the lines of communication open? You know, he was talking, Pastor Greg was talking in the, somewhat in this about how people give in to sexual sin, how they say, oh, this person isn't satisfying me anymore, but this person is. They're my quote-unquote soulmate. Or they're, they're, you know, this person doesn't fulfill my needs anymore. The problem is, especially with marriages, and relationships that go ker kerflui, it's because there's no communication. And it got me to thinking in this area, and something, you know, uh, I posted this before, and I want to ask you this as well. Have you guys ever been in a situation where you were tempted to do something you knew that was wrong? And if so, how did you handle it? How did you choose to handle it? You see, I want to clue you in on something and and something that you need to hear, okay? Something that you need to hear, very important, that Pastor Greg had stated. There's some points to know in, in this when it comes to temptation. Everyone's going to be tempted, first and foremost. It's, it's a given. But how we react to it, how we choose to respond to it, is what's going to make or break us especially as followers of Christ. And trust me, there are always consequences to sin. And again, case in point, you look at King David. 
The, con the biggest, the first and foremost consequence was that the, the son that he and Bathsheba had, the first one, died. God took that little child to be with him. The other situation was his house was so, his, his family was so beyond messed up. You had poor Tamar being raped by her half-brother Amnon. Absalom trying to take over. And then later on, another son, Adonijah, I believe his name was, trying to do the same thing. And all because David gave in to a weakness. Uh, I heard from one person who spoke on this that this was because David was relaxing back in his kingdom instead of fighting with his men. You know, fighting in, in battles with his men. And more than likely that's true. But David was not a perfect person, yet God still used him because David chose to humble his heart before him. And I thank God about that. And thirdly, God's standards are absolute, people. They don't change. You know, I learned something also from uh, Pastor Joe Foch, that the gospel, God's word is eternal. It never, ever, ever gets old. It, you, you, you can't, it, 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 there's no way it'll get old. God's word stands as it is. You don't compromise the gospel to go along with the times. God's word stands just as it is. And there are people that are trying to change and or blot out God's word, and you can't do that. Also, when it comes to this, pure and simple as well, wrong is wrong, even when others are doing worse than you, or you know, seemingly worse than you. When, especially when no one, no, no human sees. Trust me, God sees what you're doing, and even when your conscience at that point says, "Hey, go ahead," there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, give you. A, a, a kind of a humorous aspect of this Ron White talks about how uh, he gave in to temptation and uh, was uh, cheating on, cheated on his wife when he was out uh, doing some of his comedy and he said he had the bad aspect of him you know that the devil little devil on his shoulder here saying go for it go for it and the, the angel over here was saying go for it too because he was claiming he hadn't he hadn't been sexually satisfied in a while and that's no excuse but basically he says afterwards that little angel was back on his post saying that was wrong mister that's how our conscience can be sometimes and he was also talking about the fact that we often have a seared conscience uh first timothy four verse two talks about that and my advice to you, and this is what Pastor Greg was saying, if you're having a moment where you're doing something wrong and your conscience isn't acting on it, not, not that we should be relying on it, but you need to ask God to, as he put, resensitize your conscience, to give you a heart that's more sensitive to him and his word. And I'll tell you, I need that a lot too. I have done some stupid things in my time. And you know what? I have had people put me down over it, but I know when I confess these things to God, and I've had to point the, this out to certain people, that once they're confessed to the Lord and I've dealt with them, they better knock it off. And if somebody's doing that to you, you tell them the same thing. You tell them you've confessed it to the Lord. If you have confessed it, you tell them, I've already confessed it. The Lord's forgiven me of it. You back off. And if you don't, I don't want a thing to do with you. I've had to do that. And I've had to learn also to forgive myself. And that's the hardest thing in the world to do. And I have to ask the Lord to help me in that area every day. But bottom line, we need to choose to do what is right. We need to ask God to resensitize our conscience. And also, the one key thing here was when Joseph said no to Potiphar's wife, he was choosing to say yes to God because he felt he could never sin against God. And pure and simple, all sin, all sin, all sin is against God. That means not just simply with the Ten Commandments, but anything that we do or say that goes against God, that's sin. And, and, and we need to face it, we need to admit it, and we need to confess it to God, forsake it, and, 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 and if necessary... 
We need to not only say no to that sin, but run the opposite direction from it. And that's something I'm encouraging you all today in this area. I'm encouraging you all today, please choose to do that. Choose today. If you're, uh, if you're struggling with something, if you're struggling with a sin, and you think maybe God's not going to forgive you, trust me, he will. You just confess it to him. Confess it and choose to forsake it. And last but certainly not least, I am reaching out to those who don't know Christ as their Savior. I'm reaching out to you because I don't want to see you lost forever in hell. And for those that are lost in the darkness of sin, that are bound by chain to and in the grasp of sin, I'm here to tell you that Jesus can set you free. I, I, I've said this before, I've posted this, and I'm going to keep on posting it until I'm not here anymore. But we're all chained to and we're imprisoned by Satan and sin, and we need a way out or a ransom for it. Because otherwise we're lost, we're doomed to be in hell forever. And God stated a price had to be paid. A ransom it needed to be paid for our sins because otherwise we would lie and wind up lost in hell forever. So God the Son, Jesus himself, God incarnate, stepped in and said, I'm going to do it, I'll do it. And he did it by coming to earth in the form of a human infant. The word made flesh as John chapter 1 describes. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1 verse 3, I believe. He lived among us as a sinless human being. He willingly gave his life for you, me, and for the entire world by dying on a rugged, nasty cross. He was buried. He not only died, but he was buried and rose again three days later, later proving that he is the Son of God, that he has the power over sin and death. He sits at the right hand of God the Father. He's at the door of the heart of your door of your life, the door of your heart, asking, please let me in. This is how much you are worth to Almighty God, that while he was on that cross, he faced the greatest temptation yet. Aside from the temptation he faced in the wilderness for four, after being in there for 40 days, he faced the ultimate temptation stretched out on that cross. He could have said, forget this, I'm getting off here. These people aren't worth it, destroy them, God. But no, he didn't do that. And I'm urging you all today to call on his name. Please seek his face. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. No matter what they are, he's going to forgive it. He doesn't care what you've done, who you are, where you're from, whatever you've done. He is willing to forgive it. And I challenge you, I urge you today, I urge you today to please come to know him as your Savior today. I'm going to post a link so that you can know more about how to come to know Christ as your Savior. And I pray that you, you, take, you do that. I, I pray that as you're listening, hopefully, to Pastor Greg, I pray that you listen and you make that choice to accept Christ as your Savior. Choose to do that today. It's not too late. I have to get going. Uh, it's always kind of crazy around here, but uh, today... Uh, it's another WWE pay-per-view, and I want to get prepared for it, you know. But I wish you all a really wonderful evening, and please remember that with God, resistance is never futile. He loved you so much. He died on the cross for you, and he's waiting at the door of your heart asking to be let in. I hope you let him in today. And for those that are struggling with any kind of temptation, who are struggling with any kind of sin, don't be afraid to confess it before the Lord. Seek his face and let him clean, cleanse, just cleanse you of that unrighteousness. Turn your heart back to him. Read Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 Make and, and, and choose to recommit your life to God today. I've got to get going, but I wish you all a really awesome evening. And I pray that none of you are getting any kind of bad weather, especially snow. You have a great day in the Lord, a great evening most of all, and you have a wonderful night. Bye for now.